Protests in the Dominican Republic after the suspended elections due to irregularities. Suriname sees protest against the government of President Desi Buters. Syrian government forces have made significant advances in their military offensive against the last major rebel bastion. Hi, from the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South, I'm Cristina Escobar. Two people were reportedly killed Sunday night in the Dominican Republic in the midst of protests over the suspension of municipal elections due to a problem with the electronic body voting system. The electoral authorities just announced that the elections will be rescheduled for March 15th and only paper ballots will be used. According to the president of the country's electoral body, Julio Cesar Castaño, more than half of the electronic devices for the election did not work properly. Meanwhile, protests and candlelit vigils were held in several cities, including Santo Domingo Este and Villa Progreso. Following the suspension of the municipal election on Sunday, the president of the Dominican Republic, the Dominican Liberation Party, Temistocles Pontas, accused the opposition of being responsible for boycotting the ballot. El Partido Revolucionario Dominicano the Dominican Revolutionary Party, the Free Action Party, the Popular Democratic Party, the Christian Democratic Union, and the Pending Revolutionary Party, and others elite sectors announced in front of the national and international community that what was happening in the municipal electoral process convening this Sunday in the Dominican Republic was an act of sabotage. We had warned that different opposition sectors have been undermining the reputation of the Central Electoral Board as they have worked to discredit and read this election as it has happened. The Dominican Liberation Party also criticized the Central Electoral Board for suspending the elections. We disagree with the decision of total suspension because if the problem was limited to place with electronic counting system, then we think that the rest of the municipalities using manual counting should be, have been allowed to continue to exercise their voting rights as it was communicated to the Central Electoral Board by our Secretary General. Meanwhile, the president of the People's Force Party, Leonel Fernandez, denounced the irregularities in the automated voting system during the municipal elections this Sunday. Unfortunately, those measures that apply anywhere in the world where elections are held with automated voting were not, however, adopted in our country by the Central Electoral Board, neither in the primaries of the 6th of October nor for the municipal elections scheduled for today. And we stay in the Caribbean because a large group of protesters gathered outside Suriname's presidential palace in Paramaribo on Monday to demand an end to the government of the National Democratic Party and President Desi Buters. The protest started a week ago over increased fuel prices and living costs, as well as the unauthorized use of more than $100 million in commercial banking deposits by the Central Bank of Suriname. Four people, including a trade union leader, were arrested in last week's protest. The unrest comes three months before Boutes decided to run for re-election. Boutes was recently sentenced to 20 years in jail for the murders of 15 government opponents in 1982. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau cancelled a trip to Barbados scheduled for Monday as indigenous demonstrators and their supporters continue to block train services across parts of the country in opposition to the construction of a gas pipeline. The decision came amid mounting pressure from business leaders and politicians demanding that the government take a more active role in resolving the crisis which they claim is damaging the economy and could lead to shortages of propane and other consumer goods. Indigenous Service Minister Mark Miller met for over nine hours with members of the Mohawk First Nation on Saturday. He noted that modest progress had been made in talks to end the main blockade near Belleville, Ontario, which led to the cancellation of frail services. Police in the state of Chiapas in southeastern Mexico launched tear gas at student teachers and relatives of the 43 missing students of Ayotzinapa, injuring at least six people. A student of the Matumaxa teaching school and relatives of the students who disappeared in 2014 blocked an important road in the city of Tuxtla, 
Gutierrez, capital of Chiapas, this Sunday as part of the activities of the Ayotzinapa 43 caravan. The Committee of Relatives for the 43 students stressed that no protocol was followed as the police launched tear gas at the protesters for an hour, injuring three students, two mothers and three-year-old girl. More than 60,000 homes remain without electricity in the north of France after the storm Dennis hit Europe. Just a few days after Storm Chiara hit the country, the strong winds and rain brought down trees and damaged electrical services facility in Britain, Normandy and Loira regions, as well as disrupting railway transport. Various departments in the northwest of the country were placed on orange alert, but this was lifted shortly after. And in the United Kingdom, Storm Dennis resulted in severe flooding and rough seas, causing the deaths of at least two people. The Met Office issued more than 250 flood warnings for England, Scotland and Wales, while informing that the two people who were killed were yet to be identified after their bodies were rescued at sea. A red alert was issued due to the heavy rains and flood risks. Local media reported that rescue teams are working to evacuate people in the south of Wales, where the Met Office stressed that the situation was potentially deadly. And after this break, we take a look at the continued violence in Colombia. Don't go away. Hi, welcome back. The National Bolivarian Armed Forces of Venezuela successfully completed the 2020 Bolivarian Shield military drills over the weekend. More than 2.3 million troops and civilians participated in the military exercises held throughout the country intended to strengthen the civic military union in the context of the recent approval of a new law which incorporates the Bolivarian civilian militia as an element of the armed forces. President Maduro has argued that the strengthening of territorial defense is crucial given the ongoing attempts by the United States to intervene in the country's internal affairs. A structural violence continues to claim lives in Colombia. On Sunday, the murder of two people in an indigenous community of Cauca department was reported. The indigenous guard and local community are seeking to find the culprits. Sunday, in Sunday also saw the assassination of another member of an indigenous community in the Cauca department. The Indigenous Leader Association of North Cauca has stressed the critical humanitarian situation in the department facing the constant increase in assassinations and threats and a lack of response from the Colombian state. According to a poll released by UNITEL television channel, Luis Arce, Bolivian presidential candidate of the movement towards socialism, is on course to win the elections on May 3rd with 31.6% of voting intention. Arce, who was the economic minister under the government of former President Evo Morales, is far ahead of former President Carlos Mesa, who has 17.1% support, and the de facto President Yanin Añez with 16.5%. All of this according to the pollsters. The poll commissioned by El Debe newspaper and Unitel Channel surveyed around 2,200 people and was carried out between February 7th and 14th in the capitals of the nine departments of the countries. And we continue in Bolivia. Residents of the city of Sacaba, Cochabamba, marked three months since the, since the November 15th massacre of those protesting against the November 15th coup against former President Evo Morales. Families and residents gathered to mark the day when nine men were killed by the military as residents staged a protest on the main road connecting the city of Cochabamba to Chapare province. Local leaders of the movement towards socialism attended the gathering as the victims were remembered as martyrs killed in defense of Bolivian democracy by the de facto authorities. The community believes that justice will only come about if the movement towards socialism returns to power. The general director of Chile's National Police Force, Mario Rosas, will be interrogated this week of these 30 complaints submitted against him, of which 21 related to lawsuits filed for crimes against humanity. 
To these are added nine lawsuits for crimes such as torture and unlawful coercion in the context of the widespread anti-government protest in the country. Among the, longs, the lawsuits are cases such as that of Mauricio Fredes, a protester who died from electrocution after falling into a construction pit while fleeing the police, and that of Oscar Perez in a serious condition after being run over the police. Also, all the cases related to eye trauma and serious injuries to children and adults. And it's carnival season in several countries in Latin America. In Uruguay, thousands are taking part in the longest carnival in the world. Let's take a look. It's one of the most anticipated parades for all Uruguayans. Each February, tens of thousands of people participate in the parade where 50 groups of revelers present the colorful and distinct sound of three drums, which identify the rhythm of candombe. Candombe for Uruguay is almost everything. It's a popular movement where the black race is manifested, mixed with the white race, and with the tourists, it means a lot for Uruguay. It's typical and the only place in the world where you are going to see it. This year, the parade was organized as a tribute to Julio Sosa Canela, who died in December last year. He was one of the most famous figures of this carnival. It's a tribute to Canela, a person who many years ago lived for Candombe. He is a reference for all of us that has presented year after year. Unfortunately, he died recently, but today this celebration goes to that great man, a personality for our culture. Candombe is recognized as an intangible world heritage by UNESCO. The rhythms are an inherited tradition rooted in the slavery era. The Africans brought as slaves passed on the knowledge and values of their rich culture and in that process created the characteristic drums of candombe. Today is like the Mecca for all candombe players. It is the day when after revelers prepare and rehearse weekly. They come together in this tradition. You will see and participate in a group of 70 revelers from the whole country. This is a national contest. And candombe today is how Uruguayans are many times recognized. Where there is an Uruguayan, there is candombe. Until a few years ago, and before the increase in the amount of revelers looking to compete for the prize of press presentation, the official parade had been organized for two days. More than 2,000 drums and dozens of dancers walked along the Isla de la Flores street, the main street of the South and Palermo neighborhoods, to enjoy the carnival with candombe in their hearts. We're taking one last break now, but stay with us. Welcome back. Chinese health officials want patients who have recovered from the coronavirus to donate blood plasma to treat others who are critically ill. Speaking during a media briefing on Monday, Wu Jiangguan, head of China's National Health Commission, explained that plasma from patients who have recovered from COVID-19 contains antibodies that can help reduce the virus load in critically ill patients. Eleven patients at a hospital in Wuhan, the epicenter of the disease, received plasma infusions last week, according to Sun Jian Ron of the Biological Center of the Minis at the Ministry of Science and Technology. Updated figures show the death toll in China now stands at 1,772, while 10,844 patients have recovered. 
There are still 10,000 acute patients and 10,000 cure patients under hope. Here we call for an action that thousands to donate blood plasma to save thousands of people. I hope more of them will extend their arms and donate their plasma. Syrian government forces have made significant advances in their military offensive against the last major rebel stronghold in the north of the country, having liberated at least 23 villages of west of Aleppo. The latest advances come after government forces drove rebel fighters from the key M5 highway, linking Aleppo to the capital, Damascus, reopening the fastest route between Syria's two biggest cities for the first time in years. And residents of the northwestern Syrian city of Aleppo gathered in the streets to celebrate recent advances by the Syrian Arab army as it regained full control of the city. Social media footage showed jubilant residents waving national flags and chanting slogans for supporting the forces and President Bashar al-Assad. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Monday committed to supporting the fight against corruption in Angola as he met with President Joao Lorenzo. Pompeo arrived in Angola on Sunday night from Senegal, where he started his Africa tour. During a speech, the Secretary of State said the Angolan government's mission to increase financial transparency and combat corruption would be incredibly difficult, but noted that the United States would be by Angola's side in helping to achieve this. Pompeo also commented on plans for a natural gas project in Angola, which could receive around $1 billion U.S. billion in funding. He said the project would benefit both American businesses and the Angolan people. After visiting Angola, Pompeo is said to head to Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous nation with more than 100 million inhabitants. On Friday, Mauritania opened a parliamentary inquiry into the regime of former President Mohamed Abdelaziz. The inquiry is linked to alleged corruption and mismanagement of the country's resources. Abdelaziz ruled Mauritania for 10 years as its, as its eighth president. He assumed power via a coup and later became a civilian ruler, winning two five-year terms in office. The Commission is perfectly conscious of the need to undertake a professional and impartial work and commits to making every effort to shed objective light on this dossier, considering the national interest as its only motive. We stay in Africa because Burundi's Truth and Reconciliation Commission has found more than 6,000 bodies in six mass graves in Karusi province, the largest discovery since the government launched a na nationwide excavation process in January. Commission chairperson Pierre Claver Dayikario told journalists on Friday that the remains of 6,032 victims, as well as thousands of bullets, were recovered from the graves. Clothes, glasses, and rosaries were used to identify some of the victims. Burundi's population is divided between the Tutsi and Hutu ethnic groups. It suffered a civil war which killed 300,000 people before it ended in 2005. So far, the commission has identified more than 142,000 victims of violence. South Sudan rebels rejected on Sunday a government peace offer to return to a system of 10 states, dashing hopes of ending a six-year war that has claimed 308,000 lives. President Salva Kiir said he would compromise by cutting the current 32 regional states back down to the original 10, which was a key rebel demand, in order to pave the way for a unity government. But Kier also included three administrative areas which were rejected by rebel chief Rik Mashakar. Mashar warned the three areas causing further problems, calling the issue a Pandora's box. February 17th marks nine years since former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown and killed by rebels supported by the U.S. Uh, President Barack Obama, along with NATO uh, L allies. Nine years later, the people of Libya are yet to see the freedom and democracy that NATO promised then. The once prosperous nation was plunged into chaos and bloodshed as different warlords and militias vie for control of the country. Libya, once the center of Pan-African unity, has become an open-air slave market with black Africans sold for as little as $400. 
And we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Cristina Escobar. Thank you for watching.